Hi, thanks so much for joining us for this coaching session on how to finally look fit and toned forever. We're Linz and Zoe from Hillworks Online Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. How long have you been struggling to get fit and toned? And on a scale of 1 to 10, how important is it for you to look fit and toned once and for all? What have you tried doing to get fit and toned in the past? And what happened with those approaches? What do you see as your biggest challenge with getting fit and toned? For most people, the problem is the wrong information. Everyone knows you need to exercise and eat healthy. But do you actually know what type of exercise to do or what eating healthy means? Everyone says you have to cut out the crap and only eat wholesome food or you'll ruin everything. But is this actually true? What if we could show you how to eat to get fit and toned while still enjoying the things you love and not spend every day slogging out in the gym? Would that be okay? During this powerful coaching session, we're going to show you exactly how to exercise in the minimum time for maximum results. We're going to show you the types of foods that will aid your health and lead to weight loss. We're going to uncover hidden challenges that may be sabotaging your results. And we're going to cover why you don't need to be perfect to attain the body you desire. There are two types of people in this world. Those that are looking for a solution and take action. And those that resign themselves to staying the way they are no matter how unhappy it makes them. We promise you'll leave this session renewed, inspired and ready to finally take action to become fit and toned once and for all. So our number one is intense exercise. Practically everybody knows that exercise is part of the equation when it comes to getting great results. It's usually the first thing we look at when we want to lose, lose weight, right? For some reason, a lot of people view exercise in a more is more kind of way. If two days of exercising for 30 minutes is good, then seven days of exercising for an hour must be better. This is a great way to not only burn out and give up on exercise completely because, oh my gosh, it's just so hard to exercise for an hour seven days a week. But it's also a great way to completely stress out your body, throw your hormones out of whack, lower your immune system and allow your body to actually hang on to its fat stores. We'll talk about this a little more later. So as we go through this seminar, you'll notice that Lindsay and I talk a lot about moderation. Everything in moderation, including exercise. So what does a moderate amount of exercise look like? If we take a look at the Australian Department of Health's physical activity guidelines for 18 to 64 year olds, we find they say doing any physical activity is better than doing none. If you currently do no physical activity, start by doing some and gradually build up to the recommended amount. We want you to be active on most, preferably all days every week. This can be as simple as taking the stairs at work, playing with your kids or parking at the far end of the car park. The guidelines state you should accumulate 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity. This includes brisk walking, dancing, gardening, house chores, playing with kids or animals, or in anything where you get a bit puffed and raise your heart rate noticeably. Or you can do 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity physical activity. This includes running, fast swimming, boot camps, doing the thousand steps, competitive sports, carrying or lifting heavy loads, basically anything that requires a great amount of effort, causes rapid breathing to the point where you can't talk and accelerates your heart rate. Or do a combination of both. But the guidelines do state that you need to do muscle strengthening activities on at least two days each week. You need to minimise the amount of time spent in prolonged sitting and break up long periods of sitting as often as possible. So if we take those guidelines and put them into practice, we might get the following schedule. Two 30-minute vigorous strength training sessions, one 20-minute high-intensity cardio workout, walking the dog or playing footy with the kids for 20 minutes every day. That's not an unachievable amount of exercise, right? Our general preference towards exercise is vigorous intensity because it takes half the time and recent studies have shown it produces much better results. So instead of taking a more is more approach to exercise, let's start taking a less is more approach to exercise and focus on the quality and intensity. Remembering though that if you're just starting out, start small and build from there. Okay, number two is adequate protein. You hear fitness professionals talk about this one a lot, and to be honest, we're no different. Many of the issues within the so-called obesity crisis have to do with the fact that our large portion of our diets are coming from ready-made or processed foods, which means a diet high in carbs and fats and much lower in protein than what it used to be. Protein does a bunch of awesome things for us. Protein helps us grow, and it helps us maintain every cell in our bodies. It's important for healing wounds, replacing dead skin cells, growing hair and nails. Protein forms enzymes for digestion, makes hormones to keep the body balanced, creates antibodies to help our immune systems, and yes, they build muscles, which keeps us looking leaner, feeling stronger, and burning more fat at rest. 
The recommended daily intake for protein to prevent deficiency is approximated at 0.75 grams per kilo for women and 0.84 grams per kilo for men, and one gram per kilo for pregnant women. That number is to prevent deficiency. For optimal aesthetics, the number is variable, but around 25% of total calories is preferable. That's a lot of numbers. If you're anything like me, you've just gone, holy crap, that's a lot of maths. I'm just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. Well, let's just wait till the next bit. We're all about simplifying the process, so here's our rule of thumb. Just prioritize protein. Ensuring that all of your meals contain some form of protein means you'll not only be fuller for longer, because protein promotes fullness, it also means you'll be getting adequate amounts. So good sources of protein can include lean meats and fish, eggs, dairy products, just don't overdo these, beans and legumes, soy products like tofu, seeds, nuts, and some whole grains. These have a much lower protein content than most people think, so don't rely on these. Our number three would be whole foods. So a large part of the issues we face today come from the fact that, like Lynn said, processed foods are too readily available and as a society we're turning to them as everyday foods. How many times have you heard your parents or grandparents tell you they used to eat meat and three veg for dinner practically every night of the week? Or that they only had a cake a couple of times a year? Or how exciting it was when they saved up enough, you know, like five or ten cents to buy a packet of lollies and that packet of lollies had, say, five lollies in it? Now, you can go to the supermarket and buy a cake whenever you want. You can buy four or five if you really want. You can buy biscuits, lollies, chocolate in huge amounts. That's not so bad though, we might not really want to do that, but how about pasta? Who has made pasta from scratch before? It takes about an hour, or two if you're making ravioli or gnocchi. I guarantee you, if we had to make it all from scratch, instead of slicing up a packet and throwing it into some boiling water, we would eat a whole lot less of it. Same with rice, same with bread, and same with cereals. And that would be good, because a lot of these foods have very little nutrients, very few vitamins, high amounts of calories, more sugar, and very little fibre. And therein lies the problem. As a society, we're overfed and undernourished, and that is a massive problem. So what do we do about it? Eat whole, natural, unprocessed foods 80% of the time. We believe 80% of a person's diet should consist of whole grains, colourful fruits and veggies, fresh lean meats, and full-fat dairy, or other complete proteins like soy and quinoa if you're inclined to be a vegetarian or vegan. 20% should be your processed stuff. 20% of your entire diet. That means if you eat five meals a day, three main meals and two snacks, only one of those meals each day should have something that's highly processed. It might be a few squares of chocolate after dinner. It might be pasta for lunch. It might be cereal for breakfast. But it definitely shouldn't be cereal for breakfast, pasta for lunch, biscuits with your afternoon tea, lasagna for dinner, and a maxi bowl for dessert. Cut back on your processed foods and watch your transformation. You'll look better, feel better, function better, have more energy, have clearer skin, and you'll have a clearer mind. And if you've got a family, they'll reap all of those benefits as well. Number four, liquid calories. This is a big one. A lot of the time we think we're eating healthy because the majority of our food is healthy, but we neglect to take into account what we're drinking. Did you know that having two lattes a day adds an extra 300 calories to your total daily calorie intake? Now we're not massive on calorie counting, but just remember that your body counts them even if you don't. A daily calorie reduction of two to 300 is considered optimal to promote weight loss. You take those two lattes out and provide you're a healthy person with no metabolic issues, you've given yourself enough of a deficit to lose 200 to 500 grams per week until your body finds a new set point, just from taking out those two coffees. So think about all the times when you go out for a coffee with people, or drink juice for breakfast, or have a chai latte with a friend, or boost juice at the shops. How many of you have one wine over the weekend? These things don't fill you up. They don't offer any nutrients. And for those of you who think juice does, we've got some very bad news for you. They're fun and they're social. We're not telling you to stop, absolutely not. We enjoy a wine and a coffee at the best of times. But what we do want you to do is to be aware of your intake and limit yourself. My personal rule of thumb is one latte a day purely for the taste. A maximum of two coffees, juices or soft drinks a week socially and alcohol is reserved for a Friday or a Saturday night, but rarely both. It's about creating guidelines that let you live and enjoy your life without overindulging. Moderation every day of the year. Number five, adequate sleep. We talked a little bit before about how over-exercising is a great way to overexert yourself, stress your body out and make it more likely to hold on to fat. 
Lindsay and I often talk to our clients about how important recovery is for health, well-being, and weight management, and sleep falls under the recovery category. One major thing that sleep does is help curb inflammation. Inflammation is linked to heart disease, stroke, diabetes, arthritis, and premature aging. Research indicates that people who get six hours or less of sleep a night have higher levels of C-reactive proteins, which are inflammatory markers, than those who get more sleep. Inflammation and stress are very closely related. The more stressed you are, the more inflammation occurs in your body. For those of you who don't know, our bodies process stress exactly the same way. Running from a saber-toothed tiger produces exactly the same physiological response as having a fight with your partner or working in a high-stress environment. The difference is the stress response produced by the saber-toothed tiger is going to go away. You're going to go to sleep and your body is going to reset itself. Ongoing stress needs to be managed with proper recovery. One of the major things that getting enough sleep does is help you manage your weight. Sleep and metabolism are controlled by the same sectors of the brain, which is the hypothalamus. So when you're sleepy, certain hormone levels raise and those same hormones drive appetite. How often have you found yourself reaching for sugar or processed foods when you're tired just to get you through? Interestingly, researchers at the University of Chicago found that dieters who were well rested lost more fat than those who were sleep deprived, who lost mainly muscle. Mindset. Mindset is often something that gets completely overlooked when we are after results. And we would argue that is possibly the most important thing in ensuring you actually reach your goal. In fact, our Inner, inner Warrior Challenge is designed around fostering a healthy mindset instead of just centering on losing weight. Because we found that the people with the healthiest mindsets also have the healthiest habits. Here's a couple of things we think are particularly important. Number one, realizing it's okay to fail. The only true failures are not starting in the first place or giving up completely. You will fail over and over and over again, but you will learn from those failures and they will set you on the right course for you. It's only when you realize this that you'll be brave enough to try and that you will succeed. Number two, realizing that you are in control. Things don't have to just happen to you. If you let them, something else will always be in control of your life. If you think things are hard and unfair, they will always be hard and unfair. Some examples can be thinking you can't just stop at one, waiting for better weather to exercise, thinking I can't eat healthily because my family don't make good food choices. And number three, realising life is a lot better when you're nice to yourself. Positive language is one of the biggest things we lose when we put on weight. I'm not the strongest, thinnest, fittest person around, but I work hard and I eat reasonably healthy and I'm enough for me and my loved ones. My happiness and self-worth exploded when I realised this. I am more than my body. One of my favourite quotes is, if you wouldn't say it to your daughter, how dare you say it to yourself? Number seven, supplementation. Even if we're totally committed to doing all the things we've just talked about, there can still be gaps in our nutrition. We're busy people. And when we're busy, we reach for convenience foods, right? So, in the absence of being able to cook and pre-prepare every single one of our meals, we sometimes have to turn to supplementation. Some supplements we recommend for, people, for healthy people are a fish or krill oil. Omega-3 fatty acids are extremely important to reducing inflammation and promoting normal metabolism. This is one we usually recommend as a must-have unless you're eating a lot of oily fish and plant seeds. We also recommend a good quality natural protein powder for those days when you didn't get up early enough to make a healthy breakfast, for straight after the gym, or for the days when you know there's not going to be a lot of protein around. We sometimes recommend a fibre and or greens booster for the days when you know you're, not just, you're just not getting enough of the good stuff in there. A protein bar for when you get caught out. A natural energy booster for when you just have not had enough sleep. And a thermo booster and hunger control supplement for when you just need a weight loss kickstart. Now, there are a lot of terrible supplements out there, and there are plenty of good ones. We do not recommend anything you can buy in a supermarket, as they're usually full of crap. We've recently aligned ourselves with a company that offers naturally derived chemical-free supplementation. We believe these products are fantastic, safe, and beneficial to the majority of our clients, and so we're happy to recommend them. In the interest of being completely transparent to you guys, we do get paid for making sales, but for those of you who know us, you know we don't recommend products for the kickback, we recommend them for the benefits they provide. Notice though that we've made all of these conditional. Supplements are meant to be just that, supplements to your diet, to fill the gaps in caused by a busy lifestyle. They are not meant to be relied on 
and they are not meant to form the majority of your diet. In fact, they're still a processed food source, just a better food source than one you might otherwise go for. Number eight, good versus perfect. This is one of our favorite mindset tools with our coaching clients, teaching people the difference between being perfect and being good enough, and why being good enough is far better in the long run. Perfection so often ends up being all or nothing. If I'm not being perfect, I might as well not do it at all, right? If I'm not eating salads and cutting out chocolate and wine and being generally miserable, then I might as well just eat crap always. For some strange reason, this is the only aspect of our lives we usually take this view with. If I give you some real world examples of this way of thinking, they look ridiculous. I've got a flat tire. Stuff it, let's just slash them all. I dropped my phone and it's cracked. Oh well, I'll just smash the rest of the screen. My computer's running really slow today. Deleting files is too hard. I'll just buy a whole new one. So why do we give up on our healthy lifestyles if we have one or two slip ups? We want you to take one big thing away from this whole seminar and that's this. Instead of asking, which is the perfect diet and exercise program? Ask yourself, which is the diet and exercise program that I can actually do? Which one can I be consistent with? Which one can I live my life with and implement forever? Not just before a wedding or a holiday. Which one do I want my kids watching and learning from? We want to thank you guys so much for taking the time out today to watch this presentation. We really do hope you are feeling renewed, inspired and ready to take action. If, however, you need a little bit of an extra helping hand, we have an online program that walks you through it step by step. Would it be okay if we told you about it? We call it our Inner Warrior Challenge. This challenge is unlike other online programs you may have been a part of or know about. We run it for eight weeks and each week we give you one habit to focus on. Instead of trying to change everything all in one go, you get to just focus on one thing at a time, get really good at it and then add another. This helps break down your big goal into smaller, more easily achievable goals, ensuring your constant successes and most importantly, long-term results. No more yo-yo dieting and weight fluctuations. We give you the exact workouts to do, including both beginner and more experienced versions, accountability from two knowledgeable coaches who actually care about you as a person, as well as extra support and accountability from others doing the challenge as well. We don't just give you a meal plan to follow, we actually teach you how to make your own choices so you can continue this lifestyle forever. We even allow you to have chocolate and wine because we do not believe in restricting and deprivating yourself because they do not work long term. Most people join our Inner Warrior Challenge because they can see how taking action and being held accountable will change their life forever. After all, the total cost of the program is only $149 for eight weeks. That's less than the cost of a co cup of coffee per day. As a matter of fact, the only two reasons people don't join straight away is because they are one of those people who are resigned to stay the same, or times are just so tough that they just can't afford that amount of money right away. If you think this sounds like exactly what you need, the link to register is below. But if you think you can now do this on your own from the information we've given you, that's awesome too. Thanks again for listening to this coaching session, guys. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you.